this topic is all about solving quadratic equations that may have complex answers. And by complex, I mean answers that have I's in them. Now, we should know that factoring is usually our go-to method of solving any quadratic. For example, if I wanted to solve x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0, I would factorize this quadratic into x uh, minus 2, x minus 3, and then set each piece equal to 0 to solve. Boom, those are two answers. But sometimes it, this is just not possible. Sometimes you might have quadratics that are not easily factorable. Fortunately, we have a way around that. We call it the quadratic formula. So this should not be anything new to people, but we'll go ahead and write it down for the sake of our notes. The quadratic formula states, if I want to solve this equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and that's in, this equals zero is important, it must equal zero, then the solutions will be opposite b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a, b, and c are just the coefficients of your problem. So the only real challenge or the only real importance about this topic is when you do the quadratic formula, your dis uh, discriminant may be negative. But that's okay. We know how to handle that now. Anytime you have a negative inside the radical, just pull out that negative with an I. For example, suppose I ask you to solve 3x squares minus 6x plus 4 equals 0. So try, try, try as you might, you cannot factor him into two parentheses. It's just not possible. So we'll go ahead and use the quadratic formula, a, b, and c here. So x equals opposite b, oops, that looks like a 6, opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Notice I use parentheses when I substitute. Get into that habit. It makes math a lot easier. So then we'll simplify. So we have uh, negative negative 6 is a positive 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus and that's going to be what 12 that's 48 all over 6. So then that gives us 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 over 6. So normally this would be a quote bad thing, but we know how to handle this now. We're just going to pull out that negative with an i. So it's 6 plus or minus i square roots of 12 over 6. And now all we have to do is simplify square roots of 12. So you either do it in your head or uh, you can use a factor tree. So 12 is 4 and 3, 4 is 2 and 2. I look for doubles, which I have a 2 here. And then I have this 3 left over, so he stays on the inside. So the square root of 12 is simply 2 squared to 3. So this is 6 plus or minus 2i square root of 3 over 6. Now usually, um, when you simplify a fraction like this that has multiple pieces on top, and a single number in the bottom. In order to simplify a fraction, you have to look at all the outside numbers. Don't look at the inside numbers, just look at the outside numbers. And then you ask yourself, is there a common number you can divide out from all of them? Now, hopefully that's an easy question. This is an easy example. You can see that you can divide out a two from all of them. So we'll, we'll go ahead and divide everything by two. And when we divide everything by two, we get our final answer. Three plus or minus i radical three over 3. Right? If your answer has weird symbols in it, like i's and radicals, you can go ahead and just leave it as one block. But you might see on answer keys the plus or minus split apart. So if I were to split this apart, the two answers would be 
3 plus i radical 3 over 3, and 3 minus i radical 3 over 3. Either way is fine by me. Now the only way I can make this more difficult, uh, and it's not difficult at all, is if I scramble up the problems if things aren't uh, equal to zero. So for example, if I ask you to solve O8x oh, minus 12 plus 3x squared equals negative 3. Well, the first thing I want to do is make sure that the equation equals to zero. When we solve a quadratic, we want zero on one side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the three over. So let's add this three over, add this three over. That gives us 8x minus 9 plus 3x squared equals zero. The second thing is I sort of want to re rearrange it because we want it to be in this form. The x squared comes first, then the regular x, then the constant. So we're just going to write the 3x squared first, then the positive 8x, and then the minus 9. That way we can easily see what a, b, and c are. So then just use the quadratic formula. x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So we have negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 plus 4 times 3 times 9 is I think 108 um, over 6. So we get x or x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root. Let me break out a calculator here. 172. So you can see in this case we didn't need to use i's because our radicand, the stuff inside the radical, is positive. So not all, you're not, you're not going to need i's all the time. You only need i's if you have a negative inside of a square root. But we still want to simplify him. So scratch work, 172, uh, 2 is a very common number to use. So we have 2 and, what, 86, and then the 86 can be 2 and 43, and I think that's it. So I have a pair of 2's here with a leftover 43. So this guy here is negative 8 plus or minus 2 radical 43 over 6. Look at all the outside numbers. Is there anything we can divide out? And hopefully we can see that we can divide out a 2. So our final, final answer would be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 43 over 3. So this topic here is basically just practicing the quadratic formula, but with one extra layer. If at any time you have to take a square root of a negative number, like right here, all you're doing is pulling out that negative and putting an i there. So that's all you have to do with this topic.